Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another macro struggle. Today, we are going to delve a little more into that result that we saw while solving the Arrow Debreu equilibrium, where we said that Bill and Dave both eat the same number of coconuts every day. That's something we called perfect consumption smoothing. And so I want to take a little bit more time today to talk about that and generalize that to show that perfect consumption smoothing will happen anytime you have strictly concave utility functions. So we are going to quickly review the Arrow de Brew Euler equation, which is where we got that consumption smoothing from. Then we are going to generalize it and we are gonna show how perfect consumption smoothing works graphically and why it makes sense. Then at the end, I'll give a few other explanations. So timestamps are below. Let's go ahead and get into it by reviewing that Arrow Debreu Equilibrium Euler Equation. If you haven't had a chance to see the Arrow Debreu Equilibrium Euler Equation derived yet, go ahead and check out the part one of the Arrow Debreu Equilibrium video. That will show you how we got to that Euler Equation that we're going to look at now. In that Arrow Debreu Equilibrium Euler Equation, or ADEEE -E -E for short, we had that the ratio of Bill's consumption tomorrow versus today was equal to Dave's consumption tomorrow over Dave's consumption today, which more generally is just the marginal utility of Bill's consumption today over the marginal utility of Bill's consumption tomorrow. And that's exactly equal to the marginal utility of Dave's consumption today over the marginal utility of Dave's consumption tomorrow. And from this, we got to the point that Bill eats the same number of coconuts every day, and so does Dave for all time. So in that Arrow de Brew equilibrium video, we talked about how you could prove this using the market clearing condition. But now, once we've gotten here and you like, okay, well, I know that this means perfect consumption smoothing, but I'm not really sure what that means conceptually. Well, let's turn to a graph. So let's use just any strictly concave utility function and we'll use Bill for this example. So we've got Bill's utility on the y-axis and we've got Bill's consumption on the x-axis. If I'm going to draw a strictly concave utility function, that is going to be a utility function that is increasing, but at a decreasing rate. So it's gonna look something like this. Now let's say that Bill does not smooth his consumption. So maybe he eats this number of coconuts in odd periods, and maybe he eats this number of coconuts in even periods. Well, in the odd periods, he has low utility. This is his utility in odd periods right here. And in even periods, he has a lot of coconuts. So his utility is really high. It's all the way up here. And here is maybe his utility in even periods. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a straight line between Bill's odd period consumption and his even period consumption. And so I'm going to go like this. Why am I doing this? because we know that there is the same number of odd and even periods in an infinite lifetime. So his average utility or his expected utility is going to be this yellow dot, which is exactly in between the odd and even. So here is the average, which means that this right here, I'll draw this in a solid line that probably won't be straight, but that's okay. So this is Bill's average utility. So this is the average utility that Bill gets if he is not smoothing consumption. But what if he does smooth consumption? Well, if he does smooth consumption, what I'm going to do is I'm still going to take this average consumption, but now I'm going to say, well, what if Bill smooths or perfectly smooths consumption? So he's eating this number of coconuts every day rather than going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth between low consumption and high consumption. Well, then Bill is going to be on his actual utility function because he's actually consuming that level of coconuts. And he's going to be on this pink line here. Now, this pink line is his average utility if he smooths consumption because he's having the same utility every day. So this is his utility when he consumption smooths. You'll notice that this utility is higher than the average utility he gets when Bill does not consumption smooth. So for Bill, consumption smoothing is better than not consumption smoothing. And since we're trying to maximize utility, we know that consumption smoothing is going to be the best option for Bill. And so we have shown that for any strictly concave utility function, the consumer or Bill is going to want to consumption smooth. And this is a result that we're going to see over and over again as we look at some different macro and microeconomic models over the course of these videos. Now, this graphical representation hopefully makes sense. What are some other ways that you can think of this in order to kind of keep it straight in your head? Well, one way is you could say that the expected utility of consuming an odd amount and an even amount 
is going to be less than the utility of just the average consumption. So for Bill, if I have strictly concave utility, I want to have a nice smooth consumption because again, that line is going to be above the average of not consumption smoothing. I want the highest utility I can get on going to consumption smooth. Another way to think about it is if you think about risk aversion, you can think that, well, risk averse people, which have strictly concave utility functions, don't like risky consumption. If you're risk averse, then you don't like risk. So you don't want to have risky consumption that could be low or could be high. You want that nice guaranteed amount every period, even if it's less than what you could consume in the high periods. So these are some other ways to remember consumption smoothing. If this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of econ struggles.